Hey boys and girls, it's Mike Kelly again from AnimatorsForum.com and uh, today I'm going to do something a little different. This is kind of unusual for me in that I have a, I'm going to show you, a demonstrate the use of a, one of my custom tools that I wrote. But more than just that, I'm actually going to provide this custom tool for you. Uh, as a general rule, I don't do that because uh, the things I write are very, very specific to my workflow and to the rigs that I use. Uh, and, and this may be a case where that's true also. But I, I am going to provide not only the, the tool, but the, the file that you can use with it. So it'll show you how the rig works. And uh, some of you might find it useful, even if you don't necessarily use this exact same scheme, you might get ideas for, uh, to alter the tool in some way, or you might want some help about altering it, or you might just decide to use it as is. If for those of you that are uh, a, little, uh, a little more looking for some specific content help, um, you, this is pro the, the file is going to be provided on the Creative Commons license, which means that you can use it as long as you uh, attribute it correctly, which means that you have to say that it came from me, but other than that, you can use it any way you want. So um, anyway, this is, uh, this is just a, a character I drew for, uh, using the Cartoon Smart Tutorials. And if you've been following along on our site, uh, you'll know all about that. If not, you should get on the site and take a look. Uh, the, the character is not my typical design. Uh, matter of fact, if I come here and uh, show you, that's how, it, that's how it looks. It's not even a complete character, just kind of the bust of a character. Um, but it's it's interesting that it demonstrates some different concepts and the cartoon smart tutorial was a flash tutorial and i emulated all of this in uh in anime studio and i think there's probably even better ways of doing it than i did but that's how i did it so uh that's the basic file i'm going to provide and what i'm going to provide today is the uh the tool that i use to um control the eyes and in the eyes there's uh three different parts of the eyes you have the eyebrows you have the eyelids, and then you have the pupils. Those three things all uh, combine to make various expressions, and, and um, they're really, they really should be used together in concert. And like I, let me, again, let me say this is not the only way of doing it, not even close to the only way. It's not, even, it's not even the best way of doing it. It's the way that I do it. And these eyes are not even the way that I do that either, but, uh, but they're a way of doing it. So, so let me show you how it works first, and then we'll go into the details. So when I'm here, I'm going to show you at no time will my hand leave my wrist. No, at no time will uh, I ever change tools. So I'm going to go over once and pick up this tool, which is the one I'm going to give you. It's the uh, eye tool. I think it's called eye switch tool or what the heck is it called? It's called uh, switch eyes. And so now the mouse is always going to stay in the workspace. You'll notice I'll never switch tools. And although you can't see it, my hand is never going to press any other key on the keyboard to change tools. The only thing I'm going to do is press the control or the alt keys. Control or the alt keys, and you'll see that in a second. So uh, without pressing any key at all, if I simply hold down the mouse and then move the mouse, you'll see that the eyelids then move through various positions. So this is a way that you can you can see what you're doing as you're, as you're moving the mouse and get exactly the eyes you want wide open, or you can squint them down or you can uh, get the bottom lids only, or you can close them either up or down. Closing up and closing down are two different kinds of closing that look. So, so by doing that, when I let go of that, it uh, puts a key in on the timeline to, to actually create those eyes in that place. So now if I do it again, you'll see if I go up like that, it creates two keys. It has a delay. You notice there's a mark here that says delay change. What that did is it went back to the previous key and then went back about four frames, I think it does, and, and put a hold key in there. So now you can see that it's the frame, see it stays like that, puts that hold key in, and then it changes to the new position. That's done automatically, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, same thing where if I were to go up here and then maybe have the eye. And when if I hit, if I just click once, it sets the default eye position. That's the normal eye position. So again, put the hold key in for that, sets that for like that. Uh, if I double click, it, it has the white, eyes wide open, so... So that's that. So anyway, so that's so that's those kind of eye positions. Now, again, without changing tools, and uh, without uh, so staying in the same tool, if I hold down the yes, that's my cat talking. If I hold down the Alt key, 
uh, what this does now, and you'll notice it changes even the timeline, it changes the timeline channel automatically. Now it's in the pupil layer. And, and now I've put a key down for the pupils, and now I can move the pupils around in different areas. And then so those go like that, once again, without, without actually changing. And then now I've let go of the, of the Alt key. So now, once again, the eyelids are active. So now I can do the eyelid uh, motions and, and change those that way. So again, uh, you know, all, well, let me show you the last piece. The last piece is if I hold down the Control key, now I can make the eyebrows change in, the, in much the same way. And they put down a hold key, too, for the eyebrow change, too. So you can see all those things are done uh, with the, w just with the same tool and, and staying in that mode. And I'm, I'm a big believer in staying in the same mode uh, and just changing uh, the various aspects of it because that way you can, uh, you can control all your animation. You don't have to think about switching all the time. I'm, I guess I am thinking about holding down the Alt key and the Control key to move different things. But the other thing I'm also doing is as I press those keys, I'm changing the channel down here so I can edit that channel correctly too. So if I say, oh, you know, I want to delay that, I can move that channel out there and that, and that delays the, uh, the, the change of that particular key that I'm on, uh, which in this case is the eyebrow key. If I, if I change to the pupil uh, layer, you'll notice there's the pupils there. And again, I haven't changed tools, but I have changed the active channel, so now I can I can move the uh, the keys for that without having to to change tools. And then lastly, I can change the uh, the uh, eyelids, and once again, that changes me automatically to the eyelids layer, and then I can I can do that. Okay, so that's how all that works, and uh, that's my tool for switching eyes, and it's easy to control animations. It's it's interesting to see because she's always got the smile on the face. Uh, Oh, what I always like to see is that if you change eyebrows and you and you have them angry eyebrows with a smile, she looks kind of evil. Uh, I don't know, kind of, kind of happy evil. I don't know, Wicked Witch of the West evil sort of thing. There you go. All right. So now, how does that work? So uh, I'm not going to go through the script of how it works, but let me show you how the layers are set up. And and like I say, this file is going to be uh, supplied, so you're going to be able to look at it yourself. But basically, I have an eyebrow layer with all the eyebrow switches. That's all. Just. Just eyebrow switches, very simple. Um, it has to be called eyebrows because that's the way the script expects to find a layer called eyebrows. Same for eyelids, it has to be called eyelids. And once again, there's all the switches for the eyelids. They have to have these names. This tool expects to see these name layers here. So you can't change any of those because it expects that too, unless once again, you would edit the tool. Um, and on these layers, I have the, uh, the eyelashes as well as the eyelids. And then the eyes themselves, the pupils are, uh, it's a masked layer. So once again, you have to have a layer called pupils and eyes is the whites and that serves as a mask for the pupils so that they'll stay there. So that's basically all there is to it. And uh, I'm gonna, this will be on our forum. You guys can get it in the free open area. I mean, not, not that there's any charge ever, but in the, in the area where you don't have to even be a member if you wanna go ahead and grab the script. But if you're gonna use this script at all, once again, I would advise you to at least be a member because you're going to want to ask some questions about it, I'm sure, uh, if you want to modify it. Or, like I say, maybe it'll just give you some ideas about some things. Um, hopefully, this will give you something to think about. All my tools are set up like that, though. I have, like I say, one tool to control the eye, eye movements, uh, one tool to control the mouths, and then another one to control the bones. So that's all for now. We'll talk to you later. See you soon.